There's one thing that is extremely consistent with liberals. They don't really have good debating points. Today, we're going to take a look at a CTV panel right across Parliament Hill where Andrew Scheer, Conservative Party member, is up against a, a woke liberal and an NDP member, and they're talking about the carbon tax rebate. Now, we all know that it doesn't put more money into our pockets than what we are spending. Pierre Polyev has broken this down. He said that, what, you, you spend $2,500 on carbon taxes and and you get maybe 1500 back. Now, by that own logic, I think that I'm going to start accepting uh, liberal transactions. If you have, you know, $20 that you'd like to split, I'll give you two bills back. I'll give you a 10 and a five because by that own definition, that's liberal logic. Everyone is getting richer. <laughs> Welcome back to another video, everybody. Before we get into it, I want to encourage everyone to smash like button, subscribe if you have yet already. And just a gentle reminder that this, I might look familiar from other channels, but this is Mr. Sunshine Extra. And we are trying to get it above and beyond 10,000 subscribers as fast as we possibly can. And the only way we can do that is if you guys, the community, come together like you have on all of the other channels and you actually subscribe. And once you do subscribe, there's a little bell icon Con that shows up just click and tap that it's just a insurance policy it's like playing back blackjack and paying for the insurance to make sure that you can actually be notified of upcoming videos except i shouldn't have used pain reference because it is absolutely free to do so sit back relax and uh, we're going to watch this ctv panel here of this carbon carbon tax rebate discussion or rather a debate and it's pretty embarrassing folks it's pretty embarrassing but here we go he said that the Supreme Court decided we could impose this price on carbon. If you want to come back with your own price on yeah. carbon, you can. But that's not an alternative to the carbon tax. No. You're, you're not entertaining an alternative. And, I, and, I, and I'm just curious as to why, if in fact the outcome is that the targets could be met. I understand the adherence to the targets, but mm -hmm. if that, if they can get a plan that gets gets them there, why not? Because it will take every tool in our toolbox. And right now people are banking on things like CCUS, which may have an impact, which may help. Your government is banking. You spent billions know, but, on but, it. But, but that's one part of it. We also have to see consumer demand reduced. And we are giving back eight out of 10 families more. So if we go to just an industrial-based system, if we get rid of the price on pollution as part of our program, and it's an integral part of it, then we are saying you will pay more through cap and trade or through industrial output pricing, but you won't get a rebate. Is that what we and want at a time of an affordability crisis I'll to stop the rebate? Mr. Shear, I'll ask you on that point because even putting aside... These people are so crazy. This woman is advocating. She's advocating for spending $2,500 a month in additional taxes for the carbon tax to then get what? Not even per month, isn't it per year or per quarter or something like that? Let's just say $2,500 is what you spend into it to then get $1,800 or $1,500 rebate. Only if your income level, I think is below like $40,000 or $35,000 a year. I'm not actually sure about what the threshold is. I know that that income level is not even close to what the average income is for Canada. So 8 out of 10 Canadians is not really true because it's below the average income level in Canada. And I think it's also calculated not just based off your personal income, but household income. So if you live with a partner and you each make $40,000 a year, I don't think that you're individually eligible for the carbon tax. Don't quote me on that. We actually don't really know a whole lot about how these calculations are made. A lot of it is speculation. I do know that I've done polls on Mr. Sunshine Baby, the community tab, where you've had 25,000 people vote. One of the biggest polls that you've ever seen in Canada. It's free. It's right on the community tab. It's absolutely free. It doesn't matter your political bias. It doesn't matter if you're left-wing. doesn't matter if you're right-wing. That's not how your income is determined and your carbon rebate is determined. If you're Canadian, you're eligible. You should be eligible for the carbon rebate. So it's very weird that these liberals are hyper-focusing on, but you're missing out on the rebate. You know what, liberals? I'm going to consider myself the sunshine bank from now on. And as my first act as CEO of Sunshine Bank, I'm splitting $20 bills. And I'm giving you back two bills, a 10 and a 5. And that's the change you're getting. So if you'd like to participate in Liberals with the Sunshine Bank and you want to exchange one paper bill for two paper bills, I will gladly exchange a $20 bill for a 10 and a 5. 
liberal logic, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe that's how I will get rich one of these days. Let's continue this very embarrassing panel. Analysis has been done specific to the consumer carbon tax. The analysis that has been done on technology or sector specific um, regulations to reduce emissions is that it is much more expensive for Canadians. Is that what your government, your, your party, pardon me, if you formed government would do? Like, there, there's been private sector proponents who wanted to uh, uh, engage in projects that would have had lower emissions. There was a famous one in Atlantic Canada that would have uh, harnessed the power of ocean waves with a tidal energy project that couldn't get approval from this federal government. But the focus here the is, is about is, is about having a meeting. that technology too. But, but then, but they didn't allow it to go forward. They didn't allow LNG projects to go forward. They told our allies that there was no business case for it. When we and know that getting LNG, other countries to be fair, off there are some of, going forward, cool. big ones. But, okay, but it, let, let's focus on the motion that passed. Why won't Justin Trudeau just meet with the premiers? What is he so afraid of? They're not going to ask him Why wouldn't to Stephen help Harper? them move or to mm. put together IKEA furniture. They want to meet with him to put forward alternatives. Basically, what he's saying is that. It, 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 it's a carbon tax or nothing. Well, mm -hmm. Canadians are struggling. And if, if, if my Liberal colleague thinks that Canadians are so much better off with this carbon tax, why are there so many Canadians for the first time having to go to food banks? Why are there oh, so I just, many uh, Canadians? I, we don't have time. I'm sorry, I'm out of time. I have carbon, to admit, let Ms. Collins The carbon in, yeah. tax is driving up. <laughs> I'm out of time. How convenient. The Liberals know that. The only quick point I make is that Mr. Herper uh, didn't meet with premiers from 2009, I think, to 2015. Tax, he still refused to meet in the same vein. Uh, Ms. Collins, the last word is to you. Uh, you don't. You are fully supportive, it sounds like, of what the government is doing. You just want them to strengthen things. Why, why do you think that they need to then meet with the premiers? Do you, would, would you not see their point in trying to have them adhere to what the Supreme Court laid out they are allowed to do? First of all, I wouldn't say I fully support what the Liberals have been doing. We've been pushing them to do the right thing. We've been supporting to... them in every single matter of confidence. I mean, we have a confidence and supply agreement, yeah. which... You keep the government in power. We actually force... Coalition. ...on pharmacare, on dental care, on, you know, reducing our emissions, on uh, providing low-income heat pumps. We are actually forcing the government to deliver for Canadians. And we have to drag them, screaming and kicking, to do it. It takes... <laughs> Uh, strong negotiations. I mean, you're at press conferences together. It doesn't look necessarily <laughs> like you're cookie cake. We're not screaming, but okay. <laughs> I mean, honestly, you can see the kind of legislation that they initially tabled when it comes to uh, the Canadian Environmental Protection Act, or um, you know, even their first uh, kicks at the can on um, the climate uh, accountability legislation. All of these, we've had to strengthen. We have to, you know, unfortunately, they always have to be forced into doing the right thing. Canadians right now are facing a climate emergency. We've seen wildfires, extreme flooding, smoke choking people. And, people. and we have a cost of living crisis and we need support for Canadians. Okay, and I, so, have to, I have, I'm sorry, I'm out of time. You, like five seconds, I'm okay. literally four minutes over already. We have <laughs> one party who ignores the climate crisis altogether and the other one who's using it as a political wedge. We need to unite you Canadians. Up. I just have to say that. We, we're not using it as a wedge. We're going to keep on pushing them to do the right thing so that we can deliver okay. for Canadians. I have to leave it there. I appreciate it all you... It's absolutely embarrassing. I mean, Andrew Scheer and any conservative MP, whether it's a backbencher, whether it's the A-team, it doesn't matter. You stack them up against literally any liberal or NDP voter, supporter, or MP, and it's going to be a shit show. The liberals and the NDP understand... They understand that Canada is going through one of the biggest unaffordability crises, crises that we've ever seen, right? Uh, like a house, getting a house, the purchase price of a house is so out of reach. You have $450,000 single family homes that are now going for eight hundred to $1.3 million. It doesn't make any sense. Qualifying for a mortgage rate, right? And then you add on the 2% stress test, it's just, we're, it's crazy. And that's not even the food. That's not even other bank loans. That's nothing of the other costs that Canadians have to endure on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis. And these simpletons think that our priority, and that your priority, my priority, is fighting climate, fighting the weather with taxes. Look, nobody is arguing that renewable energy over the long term is good. 
sure added to the competitiveness, right? You got fossil fuels, you got uh, electric vehicles, you got solar power. Look, I'm, I love solar, man. I lived in a van. I talk about this all the time. I lived in a van for four years. I wired my own solar panels on the roof of my van. I had these thick house cables that I had to figure out the amperage and all this stuff that come down into a charge controller through an inverter, two lithium ion batteries. Lithium ion batteries cost more than the freaking vehicle itself because it's so overpriced. And that's just to charge a solar system. That's not the charge of an actual vehicle. Right, but the free market should allow for people to choose. And we've seen one thing that's been consistent over the past several years is when the government, whether it's Canadian government, American government, any government around the world, when they are forcing you, giving you no option through squeezing you into the means of what they want, something is bad and that's a massive red flag you saw that over a few years of you know what happened right unless you've been living under a rock it raised a lot of alarms for people and now you're seeing this whole proponent of we need to go to to evs we need to go to to renewable energy we need to pay a cost on carbon because Canadian air is living in a bubble, folks. And you didn't know that? We have a transparent dome that goes around Canada. And so all of the air from the other countries that have their domes, they've, they've opened up their domes and it can't somehow penetrate our ozone layer. So Canada is fixing only Canada's air quality. Didn't you know that? That's the liberal logic. Canada provides one or contributes 1.5% of global emissions, yet we're the only country in the world that is trying to put a price on pollution. And we're one of the most expensive countries to live in in the world when our average household income is like one of the worst in the world or below where the average is for all of the other countries combined. First world countries we're talking about here, folks. It doesn't make any sense. These people are delusional. They have lost their mind and... Um, the only way to really beat the system is by educating people who aren't really aware of this. Go soft on them. Send them this video. Go soft on them. We'll see you guys in the next one. On your way out, I'd like to encourage you to smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't yet already, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.